to the East. Good afternoon. Do we have your attention? Can you hear? Can anybody hear me back there? Welcome to the City Club Forum. I'm Nelson Weiss, President of the City Club of Cleveland. Today, our speaker is Dick Gregory, a person well known to us for so many reasons. He gained fame originally as a comedian, but he is today a variety of things. Human rights activist, social satirist, author, lecturer, recording artist, actor, philosopher, and political activist. He seeks to combine these roles to serve the cause of human liberation and to alleviate human suffering. Mr. Gregory used comedy as an ex expedient avenue to gain people's attention, to make them think as well as to laugh. His success as a comedian enabled him to assist causes he believed were in need of help. We know him well for his participation the civil rights movement of the 1960s. His efforts toward world peace, the alleviation of hunger, and the rights of American Indians. For a time, he was virtually barred from the entertainment business, and he has been jailed on various occasions for his participation in demonstrations. In 1974, Mr. Gregory ran from Chicago to Washington, D.C. to call attention to world hunger. Since then, he has employed fasts to symbolize the suffering of oppressed people. In 1980, he journeyed to Iran, and over a period of 145 days, he took only liquids as he prayed for the release of the American hostages and the end to hostilities. While in Iran, he was the last Westerner to meet with the Ayatollah Khomeini. In 1982, he counseled hunger strikers in Illinois to aid those working for passage of the Equal Rights Amendment. A self-taught authority on nutrition, Mr. Gregory is the author of nine books, which include some on the subject of nutrition, in addition to his best-known autobiographical book, Nigger. It is clear that Mr. Gregory is a difficult man to label. He asks that he be described today as a man with a voice for people. <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure to introduce a man for people, Dick Gregory. and praise God that you and I have both made it here safely today. And I pray God that your return and my return will be equally as safe. Let me first say thanks to the City Club that's had this forum since 1912. I think that we join various groups and various clubs for different reasons. I think what we do here is something very important. And if I was the President of the United States right this moment, I would come here personally and let the whole world know how I feel about a forum like this. Because I would study it before I get committed and see what y'all really been doing. The potential is there. Uh, I'm not the president, so the first thing I did when I walked in here is check all the exits out. Uh, something happens to you all in the audience when something happens. It's, uh, it's like everybody get away with you all. You can come in the audience, just the whole thought pattern leaves. If you sit there and say, I smell something like smoke. I beg you to understand, there is nothing like smoke that's not smoke. <laughs> if you ever sit at a public gathering and you smell something like smoke, just take my word for it. It is. When I go in a hotel, and I'm in hotels almost every night for 10 months, first thing I do is put my bag down, go check the exits out. When I walk from the exit to my room with my eyes closed, very embarrassing hotels. I find it. Some 
time you find a couple keys in your hand. Ninety-eight percent of everybody in this country they die from fire, die in homes, and that's kind of weird because it's one of the few places in America we don't have fire drills. I um. And I hope if anyone is in this building, I'm just really in a wheelchair or handicap, I hope you got enough sense to sit right next to the door, to the exit. Because if anything happens, probably everybody will run off and leave you. Matter of fact, if I was in a wheelchair, knowing the way we treat handicapped folks in this country, I wouldn't only sit next to the door of my wheelchair, but if it happened, I would kind of jump and leave the chair and walk the rest of y'all. Survivor, I would say to the press, stay with him as long as it could. You know, they just won't follow a cripple. I wonder what day in this country will we treat handicapped folks with dignity and respect. And I'm guilty. I parked in the handicapped parking twice. I didn't do it no more, but I had parked in the handicapped parking. First time it wasn't my fault. Uh, now they have these little handicapped medallions, a little blue with white stick thing in the wheelchair, so when you see that, you know that's handicapped. They haven't always had that. It just used to be just a sign that said handicapped parking, and I really thought that was for us. <laughs> so I jumped out my car and said, about time. You know, yeah. <laughs> now, another time, I was really guilty. I mean, I was like, uh, Shopping center, you know, really looking for a place to park. And, and I was really in a hurry. It wasn't going to take long. I just had to run into the washroom and come right back out. And uh, that's, you know, parking space. And so, you know, I didn't really, really have a lot of pressure. So I just parked in the handicapped parking and nothing did on the bedellium, you know. And I ran in. And, and it wasn't that long. I got still zipped up my pants when I got back out. Twelve white cats in wheelchairs. They surrounded my car. With an attitude. So that's how I said, What's going on, guys? If there's some black dude in parking our parking space, we're going to deal with him when he comes back. Well, it was obvious they didn't know it was me. I said, I just cannot believe that you know, some black cat can be that insensitive to cripple white ball. Well, let me deal with him for you. This one white guy, he was really tough. He started crying. He said, You mean you are willing to do in another black? For us, I said, oh, man, that happens all the time. So <laughs> what you going to do? I said, I'm going to steal the nigga's car. looking weird. You tell my woman. You never realize how certain people have manipulated our heads. We can make them love it as long as it don't look like another person. We can make them wear it on their t-shirts and bring it to their home in the form of dolls as long as it don't look like a Jew. As long as it don't look like a Jew. As long as you don't look like a mother, as long as you can reduce it down to some ugly, insignificant nothing, you will love it. You don't understand that. When's the last time you wore your mother on your teacher? When's the last time we put elderly people that go to bed every night, worried, scared, and hungry, while we, the mightiest, richest, wealthiest nation in the world, but as long as that don't look like another person, that's kind of sad. And yet, I say to you today, we mature. America is much more mature.
to it today than it was before the, the days of the Civil Rights Movement, the 60s, the Martin Luther King, the Malcolm X. Somewhere, I keep hearing black folks, white folks trying to apologize for that area. Martin Luther King was a communist. I wonder why we live in a system where everything good happens to me, the communists get blamed for. But they ain't never blamed all them niggas that selling dope as being communists and criminal. I ain't never heard of a black prostitute and all them thug and pimps that run through my neighbor. I ain't never heard nobody say the rush is behind them. The minute we walk through with dignity and demand respect that the Constitution tell me I'm going to it's going to be some secret plot. Well, listen, white folks, some of them complained in this country about us, and you wouldn't believe, listening to them, we was kidnapped. I mean, you think we came over here on a 14-day visa. <laughs> The radio show the other night said, Carlos can't even talk English. They're talking about this new test. They don't call this test. That ain't nothing but a game. And I was a black father with 10 black children. They have gone through grade school, high school, and college. You know what the whole game is about. The test everybody got to take to go to college. Now, they didn't have that test in the early 40s. That was a test they put together to protect the integrity of Ivy League schools when certain white folks were getting some money to go. It doesn't have anything to do with my intelligence because I can give white folks in America the greatest Shakespearean test you ever had written up in black lingo and you can't get it. That old game. Well, I don't like Harold Washington, but it's Jesse Jackson. And I'm tired of hearing white folks because I just think I don't hear you talk about the mafia. Mafia to reduce the whole generation of children in this country into drugs and don't nobody want to deal with. Y'all call yourself free. That's why farms like this have to be a farm. A free democratic society that talks about freedom of speech has to be that. But most Americans are afraid. We don't want to talk about that. Six percent of the American population that controls 97 percent of the wealth but pays less than 19 percent of the income tax. That's when you get the lesson with them and blow your whole block up. We don't want to talk about a system where the whole planet Earth, right this moment, as we sit here, every minute you sit here today, 41 people die from starvation. Now, what bothers me about that is I turn on TV and I see white farmers punching a white sheriff in the nose because their farm is about to be repossessed and don't nobody want to deal with the fact how often 41 people die every minute because there's not enough to eat and farmers is talking about repossessed. Something don't die. Something don't make sense. Planet where billions of people are hungry from farms in America, from even the farm coming to the large urban cities, standing in the unemployment line. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with the mightiest Christian religious nation in the world that continuously cries over the crucifixion of Christ, but don't get a rip the Christ. And I can't believe that we Christians can be that ignorant not to know that Christ died because the state had got one. That if Jesus Christ came back to America today and bugged the same people, they'd give him the electric kit. Then all y'all be walking around in big chairs around your neck. so wild now because of what we eat. Look at television. I wouldn't commit one of them in my house if my kids killed me. Y'all come home, look at television and tell me when's the last time you saw a character on TV. When's the last time you, you saw a piece on TV? Something's wrong. I picked up the paper today and I read them all, every day. Just to read conflict. Oh, this is the biggest headline going now. It's in my right down from where I live, New Bedford. Six dudes just got indicted for, for raping a woman. While the others stood and cheered on. And everybody said, well, didn't nobody call no 
nobody, didn't nobody else. And then the same day, another paper has a headline, Whistleblower, posted in the Defense Department. There's a gap that blew the whistle on folks stealing money in the Defense Department, and he loses his job, and then everybody's complaining about nobody wants to talk in America. If you talk on the wrong people in America, they will kill you. And you know that. So why do we play all these games? It's okay to talk on some first nature. I walk up here one day and call the head of the mafia in this town, call their name on and talk about them and see what happens to you. Try it. Newspaper. Phoenix, Arizona was doing a mafia story. The guy got in his car and the whole car blew up, killed him. Newspaper reporters came in from all over the world. They got through doing a report. It didn't only lead into the, the major politicians in the state, but into the folks that own the newspaper. And that newspaper refused to write the report. The only reason the people in Phoenix got it because the paper came in from out of town. Freedom. Education system. He goes to South America and gives some voodoo thug generals two billion dollars of our tax money, and nobody raised their bars. But our elderly people whose old age pension check in America is running out before the month run out. You ask for some money, they look at you like you're crazy. Astronauts just went up and they couldn't perform the experiment because them suits didn't work. Two suits that cost three hundred million dollars. Now y'all bought enough outfits to know. <laughs> no outfit costs that much. But we had two of them, three hundred million dollars. They didn't work, and to this day, nobody's been indicted. But our elderly people who have proved they will work, nobody's concerned about giving them three hundred million dollars. It seems to us that the ends can meet. Something wrong. Every day. Oh, no. $20 million ruling against Ford Motor Company cited. Ford Motor Company is paying about $20 million as a result of lawsuits charging that defective automobile and truck transmissions cause scores of deaths and injuries. And it goes on to say that that could have been corrected to three cents per vehicle. It has to be pure hate that one human being has for another human being that wouldn't correct something that's going to kill you when all it costs is three cents and the cost is going to be passed on to you for $300. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you see these, I think when you see these headlines, you see what we have to change in America. $20 million in rulings against Ford. Motor company, and in the same day, the headline in the Chicago Tribune, three cents repair, job might have saved Ford twenty million dollars in lawsuits. And today, you know, we're doing and making this a great nation. And when you read three cents repair, job might have saved X amount of lives, not somebody twenty million dollars. You got an educational system that's so busy teaching you how to make a living, they don't even pretend that they care about how you do. And it works because it feeds into the greed machine. Oh, I know cigarette smoking causes cancer, and I can't stop smoking. I ain't got no problem with you smoking. What bothers me is them same scientists told us that smoking cigarettes in your automobile would corrode your engine and be no more smoking in the car. That frightens me. And I'm sympathizing with cigarette smokers because I used to smoke a pack, four packs a day. And if I was still smoking, I would lead the rally, baby. But they charge us 10 more cents a pack for the insurance policy. So when the cigarettes wipe us out, our family, friends, and loved ones, and the United States government to the tune of $27 billion every year is what taxpayers pay because of the thoughts and causes and injuries and death of cigarettes. So if I was still smoking, I would demand that we would add 10 cents more to a pack. And then taxpayers wouldn't have to pay for that. We just keep our health when we die in front of it. <laughs> when 
times will we change it? Do we learn to start having respect for our bodies? A little disrespect for money? The number three cause of cancer. Number two cause of cancer today is salt. The number three killer on planet Earth is white refined sugar. And they keep us so ignorant that parents give it to their children as a reward called candy. Something wrong. Oh, we talk about the violence in America, the public schools is out of hand. Why don't you press people do some research? And you'll find out that the violence and the heavy dumbness in public schools started the same year the school lunch program started. The chemicals and the additives and the poisons that they put in the food. Make half the children when they finish eating want to burn the building down, the other half won't go to sleep. There's something wrong with a nation that the top four killers of young folk, the number one killer, automobile accidents, driving drunk, and they're not buying the whiskey, the whiskey's in the house. The number two killer of young folks in this country is homicide. They're not buying the guns, we got the guns. Number one, mightiest Christian society in the world. We got a Bible and a gun, and two out of it to know house where guns are, God is not, because God and gun can't occupy the same spot. Number three, kill of young folks. Cancer. Number four, kill of young folks in America. Suicide. And fifth, kill of drugs. If I came down here from another planet, and they told me about this great nation, how great it is, and how mighty it is. All I got to do is look at that list. But what's killing your young folks and do something wrong? See, it's already out there. God is bringing people to Go get on teaching at Harvard and Yale, Case Western. But it's here. Died in delinquency, have been tied in. The government done one of those fantastic studies at the Tidewater Detention Center where they know. 98% of your hard and repeat violent criminals need a minimum of 450 pounds of white sugar a year. The average American needs 128 pounds. They did a blind study, took half the children off of white refined sugar and left the other half on and sent a team of doctors in there and didn't tell what was what. And every one of them that wasn't eating sugar, so you can see a whole decrease and a totally disappearance of violence in high school. How can you go from grade school, high school, and college? How to make money, no matter how to live, without asking some questions. So we have a question. So today, Pine Arthur, this is one of the better papers out in the world today, U.S. Today. And they got an article in today's paper, you should read it. Because it's another one of these things we're scared to talk about in America. One of the number one problems that reach academic protection. We're going to talk about our problems. Free Democratic Society. We're one of the few countries in the world can wipe out venereal disease, but the only country in the world with venereal disease is running rapid. That's what I want to talk about. Number one problem is in this, this country today. It says the new skeleton in our closets. Parents is getting beat up by their children. Parents is getting beat up by their children. And most of them, if you read the article, most of them is boys beating up their mama. And don't want to talk about it because it's so embarrassing. We don't want to get no help and get that. But if we trace it back to the diet, we might find out why. So somewhere we're going to have to start dealing with what we eat. Like the Ben Fangos book, Why Your Child is Hyperactive. He took a bunch of slow learning dumb back with you in California that was told you you can't even come to school. And he didn't even give them good food. All he did was took the chemicals and the acid to come their food. And within six months' time, they was back in school and it reached their brain. There's more stomach cancer calls in America every day from drinking coffee than lung cancer from smoking cigarettes. One of the old folks want to run around talking about, I don't know what these youngsters doing on drugs. I'm on drugs in this country, man. Nicotine and caffeine. You don't believe it. Hide your coffee tonight. And cold turkey in the morning. But, but we like what we like, and everybody got somebody to put down. The whiskey drinkers, they never like the wine. Reefer smokers now think they're more sophisticated than whiskey drinkers. Cocaine snorters think they're 
then reefer smokers and coffee drinkers hate all. I say to you today, we can't make that difference. There's no need in a nation this mighty and this strong spending the billions of dollars we spend for heart conditions and high blood pressure, sugar diabetes. And we got the finest machines in the world. What about people? And a mighty nation is not a nation with the biggest bomb or the mightiest army or the mightiest fleets. The mightiest nation in the world, thank God, always will and always have been the nation that has the healthiest people mentally and physically. You can play games like that if you want, but you better play your games quick and you better play them fast for reset just about over. Somewhere we can make that difference. Somewhere you can determine your health. Somewhere we got to ask questions. If chlorine and fluorine in my water is good for me, how come you rich folks don't drink it? So I come around y'all, y'all get y'all out the bottom. They ain't got no chlorine and fluorine in it. I got enough sense to know if it was good for me, I wouldn't get it for free. You got enough sense to also know. You got enough sense to also know that every time I get ready to put water in my goldfish, it says if you take the water out the tap with chlorine and fluorine in it, let it sit open in a container for 24 hours when you kill the fish. It looks like somebody was saying, what is in this water that will kill the fish? You sit down and peel a white potato, it turns brown in your hand, why don't you peel it? Impossible to take the skin off of a white potato without it turning brown. And yet we go to the supermarket and buy the potatoes already cut up, ready to be French fried, and they snowy white. All you have to do is as you walk to the checkout counter, just ask the question out loud. Now, when I feel like that, I'm wrong. And then you find out why they have done the bleaching and formaldehyde, the same thing they involve dead folks with. We have 300,000 cancer deaths in this country every year because of chlorination of the water. There are 150,000 cancer deaths in the country every year because of fluoridation of water. Remember, I live in Massachusetts. There is a federal law that says I cannot cross the state line and sit up and deliberately tell a lie on a product and start to deal with the commerce. The cigarette industry, for some strange reason, is using a fertilizer that's so radioactive to smoke a pack and a half of cigarettes is equivalent to smoke to, to 300 chest x rays a day. Somewhere I say to you as I leave you, we have to be concerned about ourselves. We have to be concerned about this beautiful gift that we have. Somewhere we have to understand that the day you was born, you had 62,000 miles of blood vessels locked in your body. 62,000 miles of blood vessels, if you laid your blood vessels in the end, and reach around the planet Earth twice for 12,000 miles left over. And they got you thinking some of computer is a fine machine. The system reduces us down to such insignificant nothings that you fail to realize your beauty. I, as a father of ten children, I feel very bad because I, I've never had an affair with my wife to produce new life. But I've never owned an automobile. I didn't check out the year, the make, the model, the down payment, the trade in value. And when I stop to think, I put more planning in owning a giant automobile than creating God's life. And I realize something's wrong with me. I say to you today, $37 billion industry in this country for weight loss. I mean, somewhere it's going to take discipline. And we're going to stop them all these lies. Well, I'm not eating that much. I'm getting so fat. But whatever you eat is too much. And if any of you all can find a way to stop eating and keep gaining weight, come see me. We can all get rich. And I close by saying to you in this room, please get involved in physical fitness. I say to those of you that hear my voice, please get involved in physical fitness. And I'm talking about you elderly folks, you women. I mean, don't let nobody dupe you into believing that physical fitness is just for athletes. I don't know when we're going to get past that gladiator thing. Somewhere, we have to understand that this body has muscles. Your muscles must be exercised because of how old you are. Organs do not have to be exercised. Sex or organs, we treat them like muscles. Please take care of your body. You 
executives that have gone through that 40 and 50 and 60 years of brilliance in your head, but your heart's getting ready to blow out? My God, what can you contribute to this country if you can get you another 40 or 50 years with what you already got? Get rid of your hatred, and your racism, and your sexism, and all your business and houses. I don't have to tell you, y'all sit in the room, some of y'all know how y'all feel about Jews, and niggas, and Chicanos, and Puerto Ricans, and poor folks. I don't know why in America we keep playing games. We got a system in this country that gives you the right to eat eggs, but most of you don't have the right to see that. We go out every four years in November and vote for the President of the United States, but you know that don't count in November. It's what happened in December when a handful of electoral college meet. That's when they legally have the right to pick the President. And if they pick presidents like that in Russia, you run around talking about this communism for you. You better get in tune with your body. You black folks, I don't know why, y'all be all so busy complaining about all the weeds. Good folks. Everything black folks ever wanted in life, you had it and really got it in your lawsuit. President for the rich, like the rich was doing bad before he got there. <laughs> but as long as America, with your funny attitudes and ways, will continue to go out and vote for the lesser of the two evils, if there's any God at all, then one day you should get the evil of evil. Somewhere I say to you that we can't make that difference. I must apologize to you white folks, but we black folks really did y'all a disservice in Reagan. Now, we're so busy complaining about Ronald Reagan, it just took y'all about up to three months before y'all realized he's really after y'all. <laughs> every, time, every time I turn on television, I don't see nobody complaining but white folks. And I tried to tell y'all that, but y'all wouldn't listen to me. I tried to tell y'all when everybody was talking about the prime. That was white folks. Most black folks I know think prime is a real. When he first got in, got to messing with the budget. First thing he did was cut the Coast Guard's budget by 52%. Remember? Now, y'all know when black folks wake up in the ghetto in the morning, we don't see the Coast Guard. We're in a state of shock all day. <laughs> by 32%. The one thing all black folks know that we go to a dance or a party every night by 10 o'clock, black folks run out and run down to the dam. <laughs> you know, damn well, black folks ain't got no damn job down in the dam now. <laughs> and last summer, when Ronald Reagan just signed an executive order and raised the price of yacht fuel, I cannot tell you what shockwaves went through the ghetto. <laughs> oh, all all so long, we just stuck in the ghetto with high calls of yacht fuel. <laughs> I say to you today that you can make that difference. It's about getting hate out your heart, out your mind. That's the problem with America. We are the richest nation in the world. But we have so much hate. Churches is closed down at nighttime. If God tried to get in most churches after midnight, God would be arrested for breaking the window. I want to leave you by saying to you, you are important. You can make that difference. It will cleanse out our minds. If I came here today with a pocket full of hearts manure to throw on you today, whose pocket fell on the yours and mine? And it's hearts manure in my pocket for you to make my pocket stink to think what racism and sexism and all them is about in your head for other people to do to your mind. And if I got a choice between the stinky pocket or a stinky mind, and I'll take a stinky pocket because I can get out of this coat. So I say to you, you can make that difference. We can make this the America. It, it, it don't come from, from all kinds of problems that we have. Simplicity. They talk about a black president now. If I was a black president, I would tell y'all, soon when I started to run, that if you really wanted me, better pick somebody second that you really like, because if y'all wouldn't let me clean up this country and make this America, it should be, I quit. And I can guarantee you that the church will lose its tax overnight. If y'all ever see me running, don't let me in, because I don't want to know what's the church. Y'all in business for real estate or for souls. And then we would have that church set up where you don't have to take dictates and worry about losing something. And that church is right here, fear everything but God. 
see y'all today at my inauguration on the balance the budget. Wouldn't cost you a penny. It's using the God intelligence. We wipe out the Nazi, wipe out the syndicate, wouldn't need no army, wouldn't need no bullets, wouldn't need one cop. It's a God intelligence. Take my pencil. The executive order declaring one hundred dollar bills and fifty dollar bills will no longer be green, they'll be red. And all y'all that come in, if you ain't got an income tax saving, you can burn them. And take that back to the mafia and the big pushes. And all the illegal trillions of dollars of hustles that go to I'm outraged living in a country where I got an administration want to tax, tax the waitress and waitress tips, but don't want to get mafia money. But all you got to do is just change the color of one hundred dollar bills and baby when y'all brought that funny money back in from them foreign countries, you sure would have to tell me where it came from. Then we wouldn't have to worry about some poor person ripping off a food stamp. We didn't need food stamps in the first place, but we needed more nutrition stamps. I tell you, those of you that need it, you can only buy that which is nutritious. So I say to you today, you can make that. Go to bed and get up early one morning and look at the sun when the sun come out every morning, smack nighttime, clean out the sky and never make a sound. That's power. There ain't no power with the adults. The Russians ain't got no power. They had some power. They could have kept bread in that alive. Power is not the ability to destroy whole countries. Power is the ability to build nations. Power is the ability to create love and defeat others. That's power. Whole lots of us around here that have that kind of power, and when they drop their last nuclear bomb, we will be here. My dictates don't come from the Pentagon or the mad Russians. My dictates come from that God force down inside of me. If I didn't think that God force could neutralize one of these old freaky nuclear bombs, then I would never pray to the wrong thing and help me pull the thing. We have to live in a world. yourself and know what you're looking at is not only the finest thing in the universe, but it is the universe. And when you can feel good about yourself, you don't have to feel bad about nobody else. And one of the best ways to start feeling good about yourself is start cleansing your life. Start being careful about what you do. Go on a fast one day a week. Go on a long fast. And you ready to go on a fast? Did you check with a doctor? Did you check with a doctor when you started smoking? Did you check with a doctor when you started coke? Did you check with a doctor when you start drinking whiskey? How come everything that kills you, you don't have to check with nobody? But when you talk about life, they want you to check with 15, 20 different people. I say to you today, you can make that difference. I love you. God bless you. Citizens Building at Ninth and Euclid in the heart of downtown Cleveland. We're not only continuing our famous forum series, but also expanding our other educational programs. Seminars, debates, conversation tables. Our bulletin that's just coming out describes a new five-part seminar on consecutive Tuesdays dealing with the city of Cleveland, a weekly sports table, a weekly table that discusses each upcoming forum subject, an education table, and a special forum that's coming up soon that I'll mention in just a moment. Lots of action these days at the City Club, and we want you to be a part of it. If you're not now a member, we want you to know that we're completely non-exclusive, open to any community-minded citizen. Give us a call at 621-0082 or stop by our office and let us talk to you about membership in the City Club, the Citadel Free Speech, since 1912. Today, as always, we have with us students.
students from area high schools are participating in our Living Seminars program, which we sponsor in cooperation with the Kramer Public Schools and Colorado Community College. With us now are students from the following high schools, James Ford Rhodes, John Adams, the School of Science, Fairview, Mid Park, Padua, and Murphy. Will they stand please to receive our welcome? Thank you. I will be meeting with Mr. Gregory right after our forum here for their own seminar. Before announcing our forum for next week, I want to mention a special program that we have scheduled for a week from next Monday, noon on March 28th. Our special speaker will be Major Ellison Onizuka, an astronaut who is preparing for the next flight of the Challenger Space Shuttle in a new form that I hope works. If you wish to meet him and hear his story, make your reservations today or call our office at 621-0082. Next Friday, in our regular form, our speaker will be Philip Berry of San Francisco, who is the former pre- a former president of the Sierra Club. His topic will be the environment and politics. Be sure to make your reservations early for this important address. Now for our questions for Mr. Gregory. Ellen Davis holding the mic in the front. Bob Carano holding the mic in the back. We'll go right ahead. Comments on the space program that we might uh, use for our forum with the gentleman going into space. Uh, is it a wise expenditure of funds, and what rewards do you see will accrue to us? Uh, you see, I don't think we have to get to that. I think America is a rich enough nation to do them both, to deal with our priorities and to do the space mission. You know, it was the same thing with Vietnam. You say, well, we had Vietnam at the expense of not dealing with social programs, and people got wrapped around that. This nation was is, is wealthy enough to do Vietnam and the social programs it wanted to do. What we have to do is change our priorities to to human needs, and and that's the problem that bothers me. But when I sit and look at all the money uh, that's going into just just take the whole space thing with nuclear weapons. You know, how do they tell us that in America we built a nuclear arsenal that can wipe out planet Earth a hundred times and nobody asks simple questions? Now, I'll pay for once, maybe twice, but why do they pay for Earth being wiped out 98 meters other times and 98 meters? And so I just, I just think that, yeah, that, that there's some questions that should be asked about the space program, how are those benefiting the masses of the people that pay taxes? For the time. How come that knowledge is not being shared? One of the things that I would ask if I was here, uh, I had several questions to the doctor about. They should know that we have missiles and we have spy ships up there and the Russians have them up there, and there's no way in the world that the Russians could invade Afghanistan with 200,000 troops and heavy equipment, and the United States government says we didn't see it. You can't move five cockroaches across the border without us seeing it. There's no way in the world that the United States government could move our military action in to Iran, 77 miles from the Russian border, and the Russians claim they didn't see us. And so I would ask them, what are you all doing with all this technology? Right now, if we went outside here and planted a marijuana seed, we have satellites up there that would detect that marijuana seed. When it's planted, when you grow it, when you harvest it, the reason I ask this, then how come we don't use those special satellites up there? Wipe out this whole drug traffic that is bringing this country down to its knees. I'm tired of this government telling me that drugs come in here on low flying planes from South America. Because I know if the Russians decide to send espionage bars here tonight, they couldn't send them in on low flying planes from South America. Well, the situation in Chicago, I, I feel very responsible for. Because in 1967, when the Mayor Daley machine was probably the most powerful political machine that's ever been put together in the history of this planet, I dad run against the mayor. And not only did I dad run against him, we marched in his neighborhood every day where it was very uncomfortable for black folk just to accidentally drive through there. We marched every day. And there was a time when I had to go do a friend of mine a favor that had a nightclub, and I flew out to San Francisco every day for one month and flew back every night for 31 days to take care of my 
congregation in that nightclub with this friend of mine and to lead those marches every day to make sure those marches would be peaceful and to make sure they'd be non-violent so we could preserve the case that we was trying to take up. And when the time got right, we marched in the Van Daly neighborhood. They stopped us and said, if you come in here, you'll die. And I said, okay, just a minute. I went back home. My wife was with me and got my little children to me because there was some white folks in the line that had their children. And I wasn't about to let those white folks have their children killed trying to get a right for me. And I wasn't willing to have my children murdered, too. And I went back and got my children and said to that police captain, now let's move on. We're either going to test this United States Constitution to its fullest or let's tear it up right here on this corner. And if you go to Harvard Law School today, your first year there, one of the number one law cases you had was Dick Gregory versus the city of Chicago. We won that one, and no longer do anybody talk about your home in Texas. And we freed the minds of people. So it was possible for a woman like a Jane Byrne to come through and run. The next year I ran for the presidency of the United States and I tried to go on your bill. In Chicago, I lived there and I voted for myself. To this day, they have never counted one vote in the city of Chicago, County of Cook, the state of Illinois for Dick Gray. I tried to tell y'all then, but they can steal the candidates' vote. And y'all in trouble. Now, in conclusion, to your question, I'm very happy that Brother Hal Washington won, but I'm also a little bit sad. And I think when Brother Stokes and I were there, I kind of briefly discussed something that I felt that I didn't feel right about. And that was, for the first time in the history of a northern election, the federal government sent in poll watchers for a non-federal election. The Reagan administration sent in 5,000 FBI agents and U.S. Marshals to see to it that the Democrats would have an honest election, of which they have had in Chicago in over 50 years. Why would a Republican administration give a darn about who steals from what in the Democratic primary unless somebody might have known that the only way to have Washington can win if we bought the steal? And then if you win, let's turn it into a racist campaign. Now, I don't have no problem with a lot of reasons. So I'm not one of these blacks that want to blame everything on him. Now, the biggest violence we've had in this country since 1960 explosions was in Miami, Florida, and Jimmy Carter was the president, and nobody said Jimmy Carter created that atmosphere. But if we have a town go up in smoke to that magnitude that Liberty City did, most of my black friends will say Ronald Reagan created the atmosphere. There was five people killed in North Carolina by the Ku Klux Klan. And they were on trial and was found not guilty. Jimmy Carter was the president. And to this day, nobody said he created the atmosphere. But if the Klan had gunned down some folks tonight, most black folks I know would want to blame the white people. So I said, I'm not one of them. When our children got ripped off in Atlanta, 99% of them got ripped off under Jimmy Carter. And none of them black folks went there and begged him for some money. But soon, Ronald Reagan went there and went back to Mass. Oh, yeah, sent George Bush there. See, I look at things, and I say, thank God, Ronald Reagan. I said, at first, I went to the White House on Thanksgiving, feeding 3,000 winos across the street. I went to the gate, because I know the gate's good. And I sent the message. I said, thank you, Ronald Reagan, that you didn't die when they shot you. Because had you died when they shot you, George Bush would be the president. I mean, America would be run by the ex-head of the CIA, like Russia's run by the ex-head of the KGB, and I don't believe that's an accident. I believe mean, these intelligence units have got together and did the same thing black folks did in slavery. So, hey, man, let's take it. We do all the work. Let's take the country. I don't believe that it's a coincidence. Again, I say I do not believe it's like the goodness of some Republican administration's heart to send poll washers in. You take U.S. Marshals, two U.S. Marshals was gunned down in cold blooded murder. Them Marshals got to go all over the country looking for the people that did it. They ain't found them yet. And you bring them Marshals into Chicago? To go on a poll, it bothers me. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up getting indicted before the election. What does that mean? Hey, man, that's the way they work. Senator Brooke lost out because all that stuff in the investigation, soon as he lost it, they found out he was clean. So what would happen? What do they have on Jane Byrne that would make her get in there? That woman with all the things you might think about her. She ain't the clown that she came off to be the other day. So she knows she can't win. And she's not the type of woman that would turn that into a racist thing unless you got something over my head. So be it. And there ain't too many people in Chicago. And I don't have to come to Cleveland and say that. I'm telling in Chicago that you can't put in jail. If you, if you look down with a fine tooth comb, I don't know what they're holding over her head. But I tell you what that did. That means 
not all at once that with a right in, we will not know who won the mayorship in Chicago within 24 hours because we have a legitimate right now to count all the right in records. Now, if anybody got a steel plan, it can easily be written off as the right in campaign detracted X amount to this and X amount to that. And I ain't got no problem with what Republicans and Democrats do. They've been stealing from one another for so long that it don't make no difference. And so, I, you know, I just think it's very convenient for this to happen. And the only thing that bothers me was why did this administration send all these folks in there to watch a poll so a black man can win? That bothers me. Thank you. Mr. Gregory, uh, Dr. Kenneth Clark, uh, who addressed this audience two weeks ago, said he felt that the uh, emphasis should now be on economic goals with a joining of forces of all minorities and the underclass rather than civil rights at this time. Would you please comment? Uh, I don't think that we have to worry about economics. Um, America don't guarantee me any money in the bank, but it guarantees me certain rights. And my Jewish brother and sister, there's no better example of how you can gain economic power than still like me like. I looked at what happened in Lebanon this summer, and I looked at Jewish restaurants was blown up in Paris, synagogues was blown up in Italy, and I never heard of a German restaurant blown up because they didn't like what Hitler did. Or a German church blew up, or an Italian church blew up because of what Mussolini did. The answer is not money, but let me deal with that for just a minute. With the economy as bad as it is, worse than it's ever been in the history of this country last year, we black folks have cash. $155 billion last year, and if we was a separate nation, we'd be the fifth or sixth most economically powerful nation on the planet. That's the type of money we have. So to put that type of economic in the hands of a people who the system had run crazy, how about bubble gum, tutti fruity, and doo-wop records? And if you want to put some more money in my hand just so I can get that, and I don't know if Brother Clark got it, but I got it. One day my white folks, I love them, they keep records. They keep records on themselves, they keep records on me. And this is one year of black folks spending money. We spent $360 million for wine and champagne. Champagne, I don't know what we got to tell you about. I really hate to admit this next thing with white folks in the room, because you might see how silly we are and just start smacking us upside the head. Last year, black folks spent $271 million for potato chips. But we, we're dealing with the money. $165 million for malt liquor. $132 million for white rice with no nutritional value. $100 million for paper towels. $92 million for white flour. $82 million for salt. $79 million for chewing gum. Black folks spend and don't even demand that Wrigley's ever buy a hand product. $72 million for McCann milk. $62 million for salad dressing. Probably mayonnaise. $62 million for hair condition. What somebody need to tell me is my liberation will not come by the condition of my hair, but the condition of my mind. $60 million for cornmeal, $37 million for bleach, $33 million we black folks spent last year for law. $33 million for the privilege to eat the fat out of a pig. $32 million for cleanser, $31 million for pickles, $24 million for instant potatoes. We got a potato hang up. $20 million for vinegar and $18 million for dried peas and beans and $15 million for barbecue stuff. What are you trying to say? We spent all this nonsense money, but did we give any money to the Urban League or the SCLC or Jesse Jackson's group? All the groups that's fighting really to liberate me, that's when it will come around. And so I can say that sure, economics is pretty cool and it's this and it's that, but uh, until that thing inside of here, and I want to live to see the day when the poorest black and the poorest white in this country can still walk down the street with dignity because freedom make you walk that way. When you got to have billions of dollars in the bank and you got to hate your mama and don't trust your children and be afraid to turn and be afraid to walk, that don't mean nothing at all. And so some kind of way, if we just deal with the money we got, if we took 10% of the money that circulated in the black community and spent it with black folks, we would personally wipe out our unemployment in the black community. If we would personally, if we would go in the black community and take our money and buy artists from black artists, if we don't buy our black artists, who is? Poets. We got some of the finest poets in the world. Who's going to buy them? So what I'm saying is that to give me all that economic power without me changing my priorities, I have a problem with that. Thank you. Mr. Gregory, I have uh, praised 
kids who drink and eat white sugar do have the same. How do you get them to cook? How do you get them to manage it? The question is, you have friends and relatives that eat and drink products of white sugar. And how do you get them to quit? First, you have to do it with love. Uh, first, it's not their fault. You know, when we put meat in our children's mouth, they spit it out. When we carried that boy to the barber shop to get his hair cut the first time, he hollered and screamed, and we didn't listen. But now we see documented research now where societies where there's no haircuts in the culture, men and women live to get the same age, where there are haircuts in the culture, uh, women live longer than men. Those children keep telling us. They spit it out. They tell us they don't want it. So now we put them in a trick that they did. Somewhere we have to do it with a type of leadership. And that's why I would like to see it done from a government level, where the type of respect and the type of clout would say it. Instead of there's some books out that those of us that can get our hands on and know about these reports. But finally, I'll say to you, there's no better way to do it than to the example of yourself. Then by, if these lights went out in this whole town, if you had a flashlight, all you got to do is stand up and turn it over and you light the way. You won't light the way for me if you say, oh, you nuts, didn't have a flashlight. I knew something was going to happen and you aggravated me. I don't care if I get up. But we have to do it with a type of love 